There's a lot of hype around large 4x4 wagons right now, and why not? The new Isuzu MUX has just landed, the Ford Everest is about to, but they've all got to beat the Toyota Prado, the top dog in the class. How's it aging? Let's go and find out. This is the third generation Prado we've seen in Australia and this one has been on sale since 2009. It's been an incredible sales success, sitting only below the Land Cruiser in Toyota's pantheon of highly capable ladder frame 4x4 wagons. This is the VX, which is the number two model in the 150 series Prado lineup. The bluff shape is fundamentally identical across all four models. Key VX exterior styling differentiators include specific 12-spoke 19-inch alloy wheels, auto bi-led headlights, and illuminated sidesteps. Our test car also has the optional tailgate that repositions the full-size spare under the floor. Sadly, that means taking out the 63-litre sub-fuel tank, which has always been one of the Prado's most appreciated features for long-distance off-road trips. This 2.8-litre turbo diesel four-cylinder engine has been under the bonnet of the Prado since 2015, when it was also introduced into the Hilux Ute. So yeah, this is the engine that's had diesel particulate filter and dusting issues in the past. Toyota says it's all fixed now, and the other good news is in 2020, this engine got a power and torque bump as well. The four-cylinder engine drives all four wheels permanently via a six-speed auto and a two-speed transfer case with lockable centre torsion limited slip differential. There's also a lockable rear diff, hill descent control, hill start assist and off-road traction control to get you around on the rough stuff. Another key thing to know about Prado is towing. It can haul up to 3,000 kilograms, which is down just a bit on some rivals. Intrinsic to the interior of the Prado is the impression it's hewn from solid. It just looks and feels high quality, which is no surprise because this vehicle is built in Japan. Everything fits together well and looks and feels as it should. The VX is not cheap and the fundamental presentation of the interior supports the pricing without feeling ostentatious. There are luxury touches though, heated and ventilated leather front seats, and a 14-speaker JBL audio system amongst them. Being a vehicle that's designed for long distance, there's plenty of storage and neat touches here, including the cold box between the front seats to keep your drinks cool in the outback heat. If there's one area where the Prado shows its age, it's this area across the instrumentation and infotainment. Look, it's a bit clunky compared to the stuff we're seeing in the latest whiz-bang vehicles but it works and it's certainly not gonna stop anyone crossing the Simpson. Thankfully, Toyota has caught up a lot of ground in recent years and now has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. But while a smartphone charging or connection isn't part of the deal. Unlike a lot of current vehicles, the Prado has not gone to a digital instrument display. Instead, it retains the old fashioned dials, which is kind of cool for a vehicle like this. The good news is there is a digital speedo between the dials that's part of a comprehensive trip computer setup. You get a reversing camera and parking sensors for on-road use, and there's also an overhead view. And once you're in low range and seriously off-roading, more camera views and guidance pop up. Just as with infotainment, Toyota has put a big effort into upgrading safety features of the Prado. There's enough chimes and warnings going on to remind you of that. There's plenty of space and plenty of luxury in the Prado VX befitting its high price tag. The only thing I'd be a little bit picky about is you do sit a little knees up. And that's just typical of ladder frame vehicles where the floor's a little bit higher than a normal integrated chassis vehicle. There's separate air conditioning controls back here. The seats slide fore and aft, the outboard seats are heated, and there's no shortage of storage opportunities. There is a power outlet, but disappointingly, no USB points. The third row is for kids, unless it's an extremely short distance. 
then you can shove someone you dislike back here. At least there are air con vents and cup holders. So it's not often these days you see a side hinge tailgate, but at least this one opens out from the gutter so you can access it directly. I prefer personally a split tailgate so you can work on it or prepare your lunch or sit on it, whatever. Now check inside and you'll see that with three rows of seats in place, pretty minimal luggage space. Love this feature though, a three pin plug in point. And of course, fold down the third and second rows and you can fit heaps of stuff in the back, including a mountain bike with the front wheel still attached. So there you have it, the Prado VX is a big vehicle with a lot going on. So let's find out what happens when we get going. Well, I've talked about the interior of the Prado feeling like it's hewn from solid, and the driving experience is much the same. Partially that's because the Prado VX weighs in around 2.25 ton, but it really is quite irresistible in the way it motors down the road. The engine specs don't read that impressive, but the Prado VX combines prompt throttle response with a low torque peak to keep you up and about in traffic or overtaking. Being so high and heavy, the Prado VX is not light and dynamic, but nor is it as ponderous and blousy as Prado's once were. Still, it wouldn't be my first choice as a city commuter car. Its sheer bulk works against it. The long travel suspension setup of the Prado is one of its highlights. It really does absorb challenging road conditions. This is a vehicle made for long range driving. Refinement is an asset of ladder frame vehicles like the Prado VX because the body and the chassis are separate. So that usually means riding in the cabin is a quiet experience, be it coarse chip or even gravel roads. On test, the Prado VX consumed a couple of litres of diesel more per 100 kilometres than the claim. Expect that to shoot up once you add a load or start towing or go off-road. And hitting the road less travelled is definitely something the Prado is set up for. It's got a 4x4 system capable of dealing with most challenges and the ground clearance to clear mud and ruts and humps along the way. The Prado comes with a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty and is serviced every six months or 10,000 kilometres, which is pretty frequently. The good news is cap price services are $260 for the first three years, but they get a lot more expensive after that. Driving the Prado VX is to be reminded that these vehicles are so capable. Using a Prado solely for the school run is like hitching up black caviar to a milk cart. Mind you, if we're going to talk animals, then the one the Prado really reminds me of is a Labrador. Big, amiable and easy to love. It's really going to be interesting over the next few months to see if the new breed of large 4x4 SUVs like the Everest can be anywhere near as appealing and impressive as the Top Dog Prado still is.